Back with a bang, after missing out on the 2012 Olympics in London, the Nigeria Under-23 men's team is back and in style. This after being crowned African Under-23 champions last week, earning an automatic ticket for next year's Summer Olympics in Rio. Hello and a very warm welcome to Matchpoint, the program here on CCTV Africa that brings you all things African and global sport. I'm Mahe Mutua. Here's what we have for you tonight. Raring to go, Kenya women's sevens team to prove their worth at the Rio Olympics after benefiting from South Africa's withdrawal. And Africa's top-ranked female golfer, South Africa's Lee Ann Pace, sets her sights on the medal table at the 2016 Games. Well, now it's been a week now since the Nigeria national under-23 team, otherwise known as the Dream Team 6, emerged as champions of the second edition of the Africa under-23 Cup of Nations. Nigeria beat Algeria by two goals to one to lift the trophy and qualify for the football event at the Rio 2016 Olympics in Brazil. All attention is now shifted to that event, and Nigerian football fans are hoping that the country can repeat the feat it achieved at the Atlanta Olympics when it became the first African and non-European or South American team to win the gold medal. CCTV's Deji Badmus kicks off our program. The Dream Team 6 went into the final of the Africa Under-23 Cup of Nations as underdogs. Algeria, who had been very impressive in the earlier round of matches, were favourites. But at the end of 90 minutes in the main bowl of the Leopold Seda Senghor Stadium in Dakar, it was Nigeria, former Olympics champion, that emerged victorious courtesy of two goals from midfielder Ogene Karo Etebo. The feat surprised many football fans in Nigeria, who initially didn't give the team any chance at all. And though it may have been one week now since that final match took place, the fans are still talking about it. From the beginning of the competition, they started badly, but as they progressed to, to the next stage of the competition, they started getting themselves. But I think they should just try and work uh, on their defense because when they started the competition, they, they, it's not that they are not playing well, but the defense, they, uh, they, are, considering, they are just considering goals. We did pretty well. We started slowly. And uh, gradually, as the competition progressed, we were able to pick up ourselves from uh, defensive uh, blunders, and eventually we won the tournament. So I think it was good. It was a good outing for us. Coach Samson Siasia has conceded that indeed the team has a lot to improve on, promising to work on all its mistakes before the Olympics in Rio. The fans tend to believe him. They say they are confident they would see a very much improved Dream Team 6 when the boys line out for the Olympics just a few months away. In the Olympics, we'll be coming against bigger countries. You know, this is Africa. we we'll go to other continents, like we have countries like Brazil, Argentina, USA, and uh, many other teams. But I think we can still try our best and still win it because I've been hearing of the inclusion of uh, Ahmad Musa or Johnny Gallo, and these are fantastic players that can improve the score. I think we have a chance a good chance of winning the competition. I think we have enough uh, attacking force which can take us far at the Olympic, uh, at the world stage. But what, we think, what I think we have to do more on is our defense line. So uh, but I think uh, with the CICR's uh, knowledge, we can do pretty good. Coach Samson Siasia is no stranger to the football events of the Olympics. He led Nigeria to the final of the Beijing Olympics in China, where the country finished as runners-up. Nigerian football fans will be expecting him to top up that performance in Rio by winning the gold medal, like that team did back in Atlanta in 1996. Deji Badmos, CCTV, Lagos, Nigeria. Right now, joining us with more on that story is sports analyst Solomon Ajuzuiogo from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, Solomon, thank you for joining us. Uh, they were not there in the last Olympic Games. They have now qualified for the Rio Olympics uh, next summer. What different strategy did the team have this time round as compared to the previous tournament? Um, sometimes it's not about different strategy. It's about a playing style. And the coach who is taking Nigeria to this tournament has a playing style. He has um, been able to guide the under-20 team um, to a silver-winning uh, medal. 
he's been able to guide the same Olympic team um, in Beijing to a silver medal uh, win. Uh, this time, we hope he will go a step further to win. Uh, one thing you, you'd have to understand is that he has a way with putting his teams together. Despite the challenges he had putting this one together, the team always has a way to play. He has a way of getting them to play to his taste. He plays stylish football, and once you stick with your philosophy, just keep at it, it gives you results in the end of the day. I think that's about what Coach Samson Siasa is about and not about a different strategy, basically. Now, of course, uh, Solomon, we have seen a lot of success for young teams in Nigeria, uh, but this is simply not being replicated by the senior team. What exactly is the problem? Well, uh, uh, you see, at, at the senior level, um, we, we still need to get our us together. Um, the senior football team uh, or senior football is not um, basically about talent. It's about um, high level of professionalism at the eighth grade level is about talent first and foremost. You need to have a basic skill, basic understanding of how the game is played, and then talent is it. But at the senior level, it is beyond talent. There's a whole lot of um, support, a whole lot of science that is involved. I, I think that b we have depended so much on the talents we've got more than um, uh, develop developing the potential that these talents have always shown us. Until we get to the point where we realize that uh, uh, we need to go beyond just uh, playing around talent and being professional enough, um, we, we won't be able to achieve anything at the senior level, basically. All right, Solomon, thank you very much for that indeed. Hopefully plenty of good days ahead for young Nigerian football talent. Well, uh, that was Solomon Ajuzuyogo joining us live from Lagos, Nigeria. He is a sports analyst there. Well, it's time now for us to take a quick break here on Match Point. Plenty more still to come, including... Raring to go, Kenya women's sevens team to prove their worth at the Rio Olympic Games after benefiting from South Africa's withdrawal. Right now on Friday, World Rugby, the sports governing body, announced the dates and teams for the final Olympic qualifying tournament next year. But come Saturday, changes had been made to Africa's representatives after World Rugby confirmed that South Africa had been withdrawn from the list of qualified teams. The team had won the automatic ticket to Rio from the continent, but its Olympic committee wasn't impressed and withdrew them, effectively handing the qualification ticket to Kenya. The road to Rio for South Africa's team sports hasn't been straightforward. Just as the dust settles on South Africa's National Olympic Committee's decision to withdraw both hockey teams, leaving Africa without a representative in the Olympics next year. Wild Rugby now says the women's sevens team has been withdrawn. In May, the Olympic Committee reached an agreement with its member sports that the continental qualification route will not be considered in the race to Rio 2016. We need to learn as the, as, the, as the leaders in the federations as to what do we want to achieve as, 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 as South Africa. So if rugby comes to me and says, uh, our women's team is top in Africa, but I've seen the women's team play in the circuit, they are no near uh, getting there. You know. South Africa's rugby women's team, which won the Continental Championships, will now be replaced by Kenya, who finished second, meaning Kenya will have both men and women's teams in the rugby sevens in Rio 2016. Currently, football is the only team sport which will represent South Africa after earning qualification through continental competition. Rugby is something different because we are looking at ourselves and we're saying that is a... Is a a team that's ranked so low, is it going to make any impact? I know it's going to be a big debate. You know, it's going, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, staring myself blindly into that huge debate that is coming. Because people are going to say, but you took Banyana Banyana. But we had it, the same thing in uh, last year, in the, the last uh, uh, Olympic Games. Banyana Banyana, hockey and all of them. 
pff, they're really not really performing and so on. So yes, it's, um, it's, it's, it's still going to be some fight uh, going forward, but you know, we must weather the storm. The withdrawal is welcome news for Kenya, who would have played in the final round of qualifying next year, where 16 teams compete for the remaining single ticket to Rio. The plan for the women is based upon the Olympics 2016. We have to get enough practice as possible. We have to get enough exposure as we can. This year we've uh, taken the women places that have never been before. We've paid attention to them in different ways. But even as Kenya now begin preparations for Rio, recent results have not been impressive. The team won ball at the Dubai Invitational last weekend, with a number of international competitions still lined up for Kenya in the build-up to Rio. The country will need to show that they are indeed worthy replacements of Africa's best team at the Olympics. Celestine Karone, CCTV, in Nairobi. Right now, joining us live for more on this story is Ronald Bukusi, who is the CEO of the Kenya Rugby Union here in our studios in Nairobi. Ronald, uh, the road is now open for, for Kenya's rugby women's side to go to Rio. What has been the reaction from the team and KRU so far? Thank you very much. There's been a lot of excitement um, with the announcement that we were uh, invited to go to the Olympics. Of course, once we knew that um, South Africa was going to have challenges, um, I guess we were holding our breath uh, to see what was going to happen. In any case, we were preparing for the repechage next year sometime, in, sometime next year in June. And uh, therefore, all this has done is simply ramped up um, whatever plans that we had to prepare the women to go and play in Rio. So there's a lot of excitement, a lot of joy, I guess, but there's also anticipation because we know there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. Now, Ronald, uh, obviously in the past there have probably been complaints about the women's team not getting as much attention and support as their male counterparts here in Kenya. Does this present uh, them now with a chance to prove their worth on, on, on a pretty big stage? Yeah, in a, in a sense, yes, it does. I think those complaints have been misplaced because um, we pay as much attention as we can to them. Uh, as we do to the men's team. The challenge with the men's team is simply more prominent than that. So it tends, people tend to think it takes center stage. But the focus that we have had on women's rugby this year, um, starting with our women's league and then the various tournaments that they've gone to, um, simply shows our commitment to developing the women's game. The fact that they're going to now play in the Olympics simply means that we, simply ha we, we need to ramp up whatever efforts we have. We need to double those efforts. Um, get better conditioning, be better fitness, better understanding of the game, and uh, participate in as many tournaments as we can in the build-up to that, because you can only get better by playing against the best. Uh, and finally, Ronald, obviously the, the men's Rugby 7 squad did put on a brave show at the Dubai Rugby 7 circuit last week. Is this now an indication of things to come for Benjamin Ayimba's side? I wouldn't say it was a brave show, because when you say brave show, it's sort of implies that they played against the run of play and it's surprising that they got to where they were. This is a really good team and they simply showed their potential. It's interesting that there are some regulars who are not there. Once they come back, people will get to see that the team is actually a lot better than they saw this weekend. It sh simply shows that if Mr. Yumba and his team focus on the job, um, there's no telling where we can go. We really are a good side. All right, Ronald, thank you very much for speaking to us there. That was uh, Ronald Bukusi, CEO of the Kenya Rugby Union. This is, of course, coming after the Kenya Rugby Sevens women's team qualified to the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Well, now golf is back on the program for the Olympics in Rio. After more than 100 years, the sport will make its Olympic debut in Rio next year. And it has the golfing world abuzz with excitement as the top 15 male and female golfers the world over qualify for a spot at the historic event. One particular golfer who is planning to be there is Africa's number one women's golfer who has already set her sights on bringing a medal home to South Africa. CSD Plessis now reports. Africa's top-ranked women's golfer Leanne Pace is back in South Africa after her first full season on the LPGA Tour and says she is thrilled with her efforts in 2015 and is aiming to emulate her performances next year. The 34-year-old also maintains that women's golf is improving each year and it is encouraging to see more women getting into the sport.
I think we've got uh, a lot of great talent here in South Africa. We've got a lot of girls now on tour on the LPJ as well as the European tour. So uh, women's golf in South Africa and in Africa definitely is uh, improving. Uh, so that's my main goal, you know, just to, to set a good example and, and play the best I can and hopefully inspire other women golfers. The Pearl Valley golfer, who has won several tournaments in China, says that it remains one of her favorite destinations and she has been keeping a close eye on how women's golf is growing in the country. I actually really enjoy playing in China. I've got a few good friends from there. Um, and I think, you know, Chinese golf is really uh, improving. I think within a few years there's definitely going to be a few youngsters coming up the ranks um, but yeah like Shan Shan Feng number six in the world another friend of mine uh, Shi Yu Lin just won on the European tour so I think China's got a really good future ahead of it and for myself I enjoy going back there because it, it seems to be good fortune for me. Pace who has implemented strength training into her preparations as well as managing her sleep properly while on the road is aiming to make 2016 a massive year in her stellar career. Definitely a top 10, hopefully another W in there, um, but uh, yeah, I'm just I'm training really hard for that and I'm also working with a, a new mental coach now, uh, just goal setting and you know, the way he explains it, it's, there's 5% extra needed, which doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, at the top level, uh, you really have to put your mind, your body and everything else into it. The two-time SA Open champion is eager to cement a top 10 world ranking, as competing at the Olympic Games is something she has always dreamt of. Yeah, definitely. It's one of my main goals ever since I heard it's on the table. I've, I've been gunning for that, so very excited. At the moment, I am qualifying, and hopefully I can stay at the top, although I'm sure there's a lot of golfers chasing me for that opportunity. But it'll be a huge honour and um, just amazing to be part of history. It's been a phenomenal year for Leanne Pace, the reigning SA Open champion. Now shifts her focus to Rio next year, where she'll be hoping to ensure a top 10 world ranking. That will mean she'll be a part of history as golf makes its debut at the Olympic Games in 2016. CS Duplessy, CCTV, Cape Town. Let's take another short break here on Match Point. Plenty more still to come, including... Jumping into the pool, we're meeting the old swimmers of Egypt and they're just getting started. Welcome back. Well now, have you ever thought that you're growing old or that your body can't take it anymore? Well, you may be about to change your mind. Our correspondent in Egypt, Adil Mahrui, tells us about the world ranking swimmers who've started competing at the ripe old age of 50 years and older. This is the Heliopolis National Competition for Masters Swimming. It's one of five annual competitions held in Egypt for swimmers aged 25 years and up. And it goes up till anyone can. As this gentleman, he is 87 years old and proud to have the power to swim till this day. Egypt is nearly non-significant in professional swimming, but when it comes to the masters, it stands out. As long as you go up, you are better. Because where you are going up, the competition is less. Many uh, swimmers leave the field for uh, health, for any, any reasons, and so who reaches up to the 50s, 70s, 80s, they are better. Thanks God we're still alive till the 80s. <laughs> In the last few years, master swimmers have been gaining dozens of international medals. Last year, they were the only team to bring the country five golden medals. It forced the Egyptian Federation to change its position and start funding this team. The support came at a critical time when the competition is starting to become more difficult. Internationally, it's becoming more and more popular and all the people are coming back. We went in the first international competition we were to New Zealand. The competition was that, that hard. Now if you go, we went to Canada the, uh, last year, it was a very hard competition because all the strong people are coming back. 
In Egypt, the Masters program began in 2003. They started with just 50 players. Today, there are more than 800 registered swimmers. Among them, Nagwa Ghurab. She competes in the 70 to 74 years category. 2009, I start my mission. I, I said I have a mission in Europe. All Europe must know that a woman, woman, Egyptian woman, can do something and can win. And that's what I did. Since 2009 till now, I have about 36 uh, international uh, medals and uh, uh, five, six, seven, seven mondial world, yes. And the two podium, third in the world uh, in Kazan in, in Russia. 2015. Since 2009, Ghurab won 36 international medals in seven world championships. The latest was in Kazan, Russia, where she got her third place, the highest any Egyptian had drank so far. She and another Egyptian each won five medals in that competition. And for all those who think they're getting old and it's too late for sports, Mrs. Ghurab has an important message. This is not very, very wrong thing, I'm sorry to say it. I'm 30, 73, look at me, everybody look at me. <laughs> yes, ah, yes, I like to do everything, I, I like to create something. I like to create something. Now, not the, the age, my dear, for all my, uh, the spectators, come on, say in French, ne never the age stop. Never. If you feel something good, you have to continue and continue and continue. It's very, it feels very nice for you, for your health. <laughs> there was an amazing spirit in this competition, a mature competitiveness among those wise swimmers and a sensation that anything is possible. Their will is made of steel. The Egyptian master swimming team, particularly the seniors, are a great inspiration to the country. They've managed to make Egypt among the top three countries in many international competitions. And they still dream of achieving more. Adel Mahroui, CCTV, Cairo. Indeed, words to live by for a good long life. Finally, both finalists of tomorrow's FIFA Club World Cup final, Club Atletico River Plate of Argentina and Spain's Barcelona, each trained and held news conferences on Saturday at the Nissan Stadium in Yokohama. For River Plate team coach Marcelo Gallardo, Sunday's final presented a special opportunity for the South Americans to prove their worth against one of the world's strongest clubs. His team warmed up and trained at the venue for tomorrow's final, with the team exhibiting general ease despite the task ahead. The team reached their first ever final of the competition after they defeated Japanese side Sanfrecce Hiroshima and became the fourth Argentinian club to do so. I think it's going to be a very meaningful match and I cannot wait. So the match tomorrow is going to be something that is going to reflect all the efforts that we have made so far. We have been in a special environment so far, traveling very far. We would like to make it very special. Buenas tardes. River Plate will participate in the final tomorrow. And that fact means that River Plate is a very strong team. They have a very good quality team. They can play in the top and at the bottom. They can create opportunities and the final will be a very interesting match. Meanwhile, that man there, Barcelona coach Luis Enrique, showed, showed eagerness for the match during the team's news conference and praised River Plate for reaching the final. His side are on the brink of extending their record as the most successful team in the Club World Cup as they chase a third title. Enrique said that both his forwards, Lionel Messi and Neymar, are doubtful for the fixture. Both missed their earlier semi-final with a club citing a kidney stone for Messi and a muscle strain for Neymar. Neither trained with Barcelona players who warmed up and trained on the field. Well, still on that story, earlier I spoke with CCTV's Wang Dong, who has been cover covering the tournament in Japan. I began by asking him about the third place final between Sanfrecce Hiroshima and Guangzhou Evergrande tomorrow. Well, in terms of the uh, host team, uh, San Frecha, uh, I believe they do have this home court advantage. They want to do well, and they are ready, as they uh, uh, said before the, uh, this particular game. As you mentioned, this is the third position battle there. Uh, they certainly would like to live up to the expectations of the people and a home crowd. Uh, on, the other hand, on the other hand, this is the uh, battle between J-League champions and the Asian champions. 
So for Guangdong, even though they might ha they might not have the uh, home court advantage. All right, now Guangdong, obviously the final uh, pits um, Argentina's River Plate versus uh, Spain's Barcelona head to head. Is there any likelihood of an upset in that final? Uh, the likelihood probably is going to be very, very small. Even though the team from Argentina is the uh, champion of the uh, of South America, and also uh, they are so relaxed here, uh, they're very loosening up. Uh, they, you know, really enjoy their stay in Tokyo. If you talk to them, uh, or uh, in the uh, Yokohama area, if you will, and uh, whenever you see them on the street or in the bar or in a hotel. They they give you this feeling that they really enjoy their good time here, and in that sense, it probably it's good for them to, uh, uh, you know, to be on the pitch without any pressure. However, if you talk to the formation of MSN, namely Messi, uh, you know Suarez and Neymar, and this kind of a star-studded team uh, from the world, and uh, the chance for River Play to uh, pull uh, pull up away with a with an upset is really a very very uh, slim. Remember, the informed Suarez right now is really enjoying his best uh, soccer, and he did so well last time well, in the last game by scoring three times. And it is actually said that Neymar could really start more in the final, uh, even though in the last game he was only a bench player. And also, it is being well speculated that Lionel Messi could also come on in the second half, given that his, he's improving his condition right now. So uh, in that sense, the uh, already started lineup for Barcelona is going to be so strong, too uh, formidable for them to be uh, actually, uh, you, you know, to uh, face uh, any difficulty. I guess I would, one would really uh, bet his money um, on the uh, team uh, from uh, Spain. CCTV's Wang Dong speaking to us live uh, earlier on the phone from Yokosh Yokohama, Japan, ahead of tomorrow's Club World Cup final. Well, that does it for this edition of Match Point. Remember, you can send your feedback, as always, to us, matchpoint at cctv.com, or you could visit our Facebook page and leave a comment there, CCTV Africa, and stay in touch with us on Twitter. The handle, as always, is CCTV News Africa. Thanks for watching. I'm Mahia Mutua. We leave you with this week's Move of the Week comes from the Bundesliga. It's Xavi Alonso's goal against Darmstadt on Wednesday.